Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I have two short things to say about my channel before beginning. First, I will have a new mic for the next video. I've had a few comments tell me that the mic quality isn't the best, and I have to agree with that. If videos mainly consist of me talking between 5 to 15 minutes, then yeah, voice quality is very important. I know I wouldn't really want to sit there and listen to someone who has a shitty quality mic. Secondly, I have a planned series of videos coming up called War in Middle-earth, where I'll be going through all of the important wars and battles from the First Age to the Fourth Age. Every second video will probably go on that playlist, so get excited, I guess? Alright, let's go. So I've got a lot of requests in regards to video suggestions, but one I've received quite a few times is, how big was the Dwarven army or how many Dwarves fought the Battle of Dale? Now, I don't blame these people because dwarves are awesome. When I first read The Hobbit back when I was 8 or 9, the dwarves were what really pulled me into the world of Tolkien. I actually wrote a script for this several months ago, but I wasn't really happy with it because it went very off topic, which is very easy to do when talking about Tolkien. So I've written a new one. You might notice that I haven't named this video How Big Was the Dwarven Army? That's because, simply put, it's impossible to know for sure. With my Rohan video, Tolkien straight up gives us the number. With my Gondor video, I can sort of take an educated guess based on what numbers Tolkien gives us. In regards to the Dwarven numbers, Tolkien gives us the bare minimum, so I think it's only fitting that my video should be relatively vague as well. The only number of Dwarves we have to work with is the army that Dane Ironfoot leads to the Battle of the Five Armies, consisting of 500 warriors. So yeah, not a lot to work with. Now I don't want to just straight up guess a number, so first I'm sort of going to explain my reasoning. Then I'm going to give an estimate as to what I think the number could be close to. I also want to clarify that I'll only be talking about the Longbeards, also known as Durin's Folk, as we know so little about the Orokani Dwarves that I can't possibly give any information on them without just blatantly making things up. So how powerful were the Dwarves at the time of the War of the Ring? So first I'm going to start with some historical background, as is Tolkien tradition. I'm not going to give the full history of the Dwarves, as it's kind of irrelevant to this video, but I'll say this briefly. The Dwarves probably had it the best of all the races in Middle-earth throughout the First, Second, and even most of the Third Age. Unfortunately for the Dwarves, it went downhill very fast in the last third of the Third Age, and I'm going to start with the year 1980 of the Third Age. This is the year that the Dwarves discovered the Balrog beneath khazad and the following year they were forced to abandon the city to the Balrog, who had become known as Durin's Bane. The Dwarves flee east to their colonies in Erebor, the Grey Mountains and the Iron Hills, and they briefly prosper, before it all starts getting much worse. This is what I like to nerdily coin as the beginning of the Dwarven Dark Age. But keep in mind that this is not a canon term, so probably don't use it. Not that you would use it, because it is really nerdy. But yeah, anyway. And keeping in mind with invented terminology, I'm going to be talking about something else I'm calling Population Devastation Events. Which sounds like a name for a heavy metal album, but is actually an event where a significant portion of the Dwarven population is killed. And there's a few of these because the Dwarves become supremely unlucky during the end of the Third Age. It's not a good time to be a Dwarf. So here are the three population devastation events I have in mind. 2570 to 2589 of the Third Age, the War of the Dwarves and Dragons, in which the Dwarves are decisively defeated, resulting in most of them fleeing from the Grey Mountains back to either Erebor or the Iron Hills. 2770 of the Third Age, Smaug attacks Erebor, sacking the city and forcing the Dwarves to flee from their homelands for a third time in the space of a thousand years. And finally, 2793 to 2799 of the Third Age, the War of the Dwarves and Orcs, a six year long war which results in the near destruction of all of the Orcs in the Misty Mountains. However, the Dwarves themselves take massive losses and in the decisive last battle, known as the Battle of Azanul Bazaar, the Dwarves lose half their number. I'm using these three events to frame my position later on, so pay attention. Basically, these three events drastically reduce the Dwarven population, all within the lifetime of a single Dwarf, which is around 250 years. These events took place within around 230 years, so a Dwarf could have basically lived through all three of those events. I'm talking tens of thousands of violent deaths across these three major events, not just limited to men, but also the women, and the children too. I'll explain why that's important shortly. Also, these three events devastate three entire Dwarven generations, one after the other. And you might notice here that I can't pronounce the TH sound, but bear with me anyway. So, to use as examples, Thror, younger brother of Thror, king under the mountain, belonging to the first generation, is killed during the War of the Dwarves and Dragons. 
Nain, father of Dane Ironfoot, belonging to the second generation, is killed during the Battle of Azanel Bazaar, and Freren, younger brother of Thor and Oakenshield, belonging to the third generation, is also killed during the Battle of Azanel Bazaar. It's worth noting that Thor and Freren were both not even 50 years of age, so barely an adult as far as dwarves go. That gives you an idea that lots of young dwarves died during these events, and young dwarves die without children. So, after the War of the Dwarves and Orcs is over, the dwarves are essentially shadows of their former selves. They have had two homelands destroyed and taken from them, and now they fought a long, costly war. That doesn't mean that they're extremely weak or on the verge of extinction. Tolkien specifically tells us that the Iron Hills was the strongest bastion against Sauron in the northeast of the Wilderlands, which is kind of a very specific location. But for the most part, they're scattered, wandering, and mostly irrelevant. Like I said, not a good time to be a dwarf. I mentioned previously that the loss of dwarven women is a big deal, so now I'll explain that a bit further. Dwarven women only make up about a third of the dwarven population, and not all of them married or had children. As a result, less than a third of the dwarven men actually married at all, and when they did marry, it was rarely before the age of 90. Just as an example, as far as we know, dwarves like Foreign Oakenshield, Balin, Gimli, and Dwalin never had children or got married. So this means that dwarven population growth is incredibly slow, and actually occasionally declines without external factors. And this problem is more apparent when you have dwarven women dying when their homelands are sacked by dragons, or when you have young dwarves like Fro, Freyr, and Fili or Kili dying before they even have a chance to have children. So what I'm getting at here is that lots of dwarves died in a short period of time, relatively speaking, and that the number of dwarves being born likely wouldn't match the number of dwarves that died. Fortunately for the Dwarves, the War of the Dwarves and Orcs is kind of their low point and it starts to get better from there. They manage to recapture Erebor and they end up prospering under King Dane Ironfoot. But 200 years of slow improvement doesn't undo over 200 years of rapid decline, not for such a slow growing population. I'm almost certain that even under Dane Ironfoot, the Dwarves are in a much weakened state compared to what they were before the War of the Dwarves and Dragons. Remember, since Dane's generation there have only been two more Dwarven generations the generation that Gimli belongs to, and presumably another generation that would be young adults by the time of the War of the Ring, and likely haven't had children themselves. Right, so on to the bit of information that we can work with. I've made my case that the dwarves fell into a much weakened state by the end of the Third Age, but we're still not a force you can entirely count out. We get this one number to work with, and that is the 500 Day 9 foot brought to the Battle of the Five Armies, and I want to address this number really quick. As far as 500 goes, it's a small force, even by Middle-earth standards, and Tolkien mentions that this force was mostly made up of veterans from the War of the Dwarves and Orcs, so these guys aren't exactly young. I'm guessing that these 500 warriors were veterans that Dane cobbled together in a short amount of time to rush to the aid of Thorin Oakenshield. I don't think this 500 represents a majority of the Dwarven army. I'm not discounting this number, and I'm not discounting the Hobbit as a, you know, a, a kind of canon source, but I'm just saying that it's probably not completely accurate. So onto my actual estimate, and keep in mind these figures aren't canon, so don't quote them as canon. They're an educated guess at best using the material Tolkien gives us, and when I estimate the army size, I'm talking an army that King Dane Ironfoot could rally from Erebor and the Iron Hills. Other dwarf realms like the Blue Mountains are too far away to count, or the dwarves that live in the Grey Mountains, who are probably such a small number that they also don't really matter. First, I want to set up a maximum and minimum and explain why I don't think they're overly likely. The maximum first. I would say that the army that King Dane Ironfoot could rally during the War of the Ring could definitely be no larger than 10,000. As cool as it is to pitch a 10,000 heavily armed dwarves ready for battle, it just doesn't seem like a feasible number considering the Dwarves have only just come out of a period of rapid decline. 10,000 strong with them almost as strong as Rohan, which is extremely unlikely considering men were by far the most populous and powerful race during the Third Age. My minimum I'm setting is 2,000. I say this simply because 2,000 is a ludicrously small army size for what is described as the strongest kingdom in the north of Middle-earth. We know in the Battle of Dale that the Dwarves and Men of Dale fight the Easterling army outside Erebor, lose, take shelter in Erebor, and then have enough strength to sally forth and drive away the Easterlings upon Sauron's defeat. If you have a force of less than 2,000, there is no way you're doing that much fighting without your entire force being obliterated, especially if you're losing the initial battle. For example, in the Battle of Pelennor Fields, the Rohirrim alone 
lose 2,000 soldiers, and that's over the course of a few hours. The first phase of the Battle of Dale lasted for three days. However, if you're using Peter Jackson logic, those 500 dwarves could potentially fight for hours and hours despite witnessing hundreds of them being killed on screen. Did you guys ever notice that when you watch the Battle of Five Armies, how Dane's army is only 500 strong, and yet they just seem to be spawning more troops out of nowhere the longer the battle goes on? Yeah. Oh. My personal estimate is a figure of around 5,000. It's a really safe figure, but you know, better to be safe than to be horribly wrong, I guess. It puts the dwarves as likely the strongest, strongest of Sauron's foes in the north, but not as strong as the kingdoms of men in the south. It's a number that shows that the dwarves are perfectly capable of defending their lands, but aren't really able to go on the offensive just yet. They're not in a state of weakness, but they're definitely still in a state of recovery. And as for the Battle of Dale, a figure of over 5,000 allows the dwarves to take casualties in the initial battle, and then still have enough soldiers to sally forth and later win the battle. And to all those Dwarven fans out there, I want to say that I believe that by the end of the Third Age, the Dwarven army is likely the best pound-for-pound -pound fighting force remaining in Middle-earth. They're almost certainly the best equipped, they're definitely among the best trained, and they're definitely among the most fearless and brave. Their only real problems are their numbers, and they're sometimes apathetic to everything else that is going on in Middle-earth. So there you have it. My estimate is around 5,000 warriors, although I think that number could possibly be between 2,000 to 10,000. I'm not ruling that out, I just don't think it would be any higher or lower than that. But once again, I must reiterate, this figure is by no means canon and is just the estimate of a random superfan. Anyone out there could have an estimate that's closer to the truth than mine. Tolkien could have had vastly different numbers in mind, but if he did, he never wrote them down as far as we know. I hope this has answered some people's questions about the dwarves, and let me know what you think in the comments. I want to see what other people estimate. I want to see what other people think of my estimates. I'm looking forward to seeing what people think. Cheers, thanks for watching, and remember, if a dragon tries to take over your home, maybe just hand over the keys and let them have it.